intro here for the Bear Pack. Before we get into this video, we wanted to share that we are growing here on this channel, and that is all due to your guys' love and support. The growth has been amazing. So as we grow, we wanted to give you guys some goals to work towards as we get into this football season. We're going to pull them up right now. Here are our goals. We're currently sitting at about 6,700 subs on this channel. So at 7K subs, we're going to have a Bobby Witt Jr. bobblehead giveaway. I got that at the first game of the Kansas City Royals opening day. It is still in the box. Haven't taken it out. It's in great condition. So that's going to be a good prize. And by the way, Bobby Witt Jr., 20 home runs now in the season. He's having a great second half of the year. 8K subs. We're going to have a jersey giveaway. We've done a lot of jersey giveaways. We'll probably do two jersey giveaways at 8K. 9K subs. Sports memorabilia giveaway. That can be anything from a jersey to a sports card to something else. In reason, we don't want to be giving away a LeBron James signed game jersey, but we will try our best on that sports memorabilia giveaway. 10K subs are big one, $1,000 giveaway. When we get there, we'll probably have people decide in the chat what they want to do with that. We can either have 10, 100, 2, 500, or just a $1,000 giveaway, whichever one anybody wants. And then the 12K subs, we're going to try to send somebody to a game of their choice, two tickets each. We are very excited for this football season as it is our money maker. We did great last season, looking to ride that momentum into this season. So if you're new to the channel, Make sure to subscribe and don't miss out on these upcoming season. Enjoy the video, guys. We'll see you guys on the other side. Rankings. So let's move on to our tight end rankings. I think that this is the rankings that everybody loves to listen to, the tight ends. It's probably the deepest one. Just kidding. After about <laughs> maybe the uh, top eight, maybe even the top ten, it kind of tapers off. But I'm going to start off my list with Travis Kelsey. I think that that's a set it and forget it. Then after that, the t like the two through four is where it kind of gets interchangeable. But I have Mark Andrews as number two, TJ Hawkinson as number three. Hawkinson looked really good in a short time with the Vikings, and it should be no different this year, especially with the subtraction of Adam Thielen from that team. And I have George Kittle at four. I almost put George Kittle towards the bottom of this list, but I could just hear George Kittle talking to me like, dude, I'm going to be catching some balls. I'm going to be running some guys over. But there's just so many people in the 49ers offense that I'm, I don't have too much faith in George Kittle. But like I said, whenever I started breaking down the tight ends earlier, this is not too deep of a position. So you got to put Kittle at four. And I got Dallas Goddard at five. He looks really good with the Eagles and he's going to be there for a while. And then David Njoku, I have him at number six. And that might be a little bit of a surprise, maybe a little bit higher than these two guys have him. I don't even know if these two have him in their top tens, but I do love David Njoku. We saw him come to the NFL as a big receiving threat. And he kind of hasn't had too many good quarterbacks throwing him the ball. But last season with Deshaun Watson, we did see David Njoku play a lot better. And I think that's going to happen again in this upcoming season. But then at number seven, I have Kyle Pitts. It might be a little bit lower than where the consensus has him. But I have him at number seven. And if these were dynasty rankings, he would be probably in the top two just behind Travis Kelsey. But this is redraft. And I just don't know how much faith I'm going to have for him in the 2023 season. That the Falcons, they simply just need to start force feeding him the ball. He's too dominant of a human being to just refuse to do that. And whenever we factor that it's basically just him and Drake London as receivers, somebody's going to have to eat in this offense besides Bijan. And Pitts, he did have a damn good rookie season where he, where he did go over 1,000 receiving yards and finished as a tight end six. But last season, he did not play too well, finishing as tight end 33. So that's why we have a little bit of doubts on Pitts. But I do expect him to remind everybody in this upcoming season why he was the highest drafted tight end since Mike Ditka. And if Pitts is falling in your drafts, just make sure to be the one to snatch him. And then I have Darren Waller at eight. That might be a little bit too low. But as a Raiders fan, I love Darren Waller. And he's just been breaking my heart tremendously the last two years about not playing. I just don't know how many games he's going to play with the Giants. And then Evan Ingram at number nine. I absolutely love Evan Ingram. And if the Jaguars did not add Calvin Ridley this offseason, I definitely would have had Evan Ingram behind George Kittle as a number five tight end. Because Evan Ingram, he's just one of the best receiving tight ends in the NFL. And with Doug Peterson calling the plays, I expect Ingram to have another great season here. And I'm calling Ingram to catch close to 100 passes this season. Last year, he finished with 98. And with another full year under that offense, another full year with Trevor Lawrence, 100 catches should not be too difficult for Evan Ingram. So I love him as a sleeper. Nine is probably a little bit too low for my personal rankings, honestly. And then I'm finishing it off, capping it off with Pat Fryer Moose, Moose from the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's just, he's not special, but he's not bad. He's just consistent. He's going to get you around 10 points a week if you're tied in premium and like eight if you're not. And that's what you can love to get out of, you know, the tight end 10. Not going to get too much work from them. But that's going to be my top 10, starting with Kelsey, ending with Friermuth. Seth, what about you? Yeah, so I also have Kelsey at the top of my rankings. 
But then this is where our numbers start to, I guess, vary a little bit here. I have TJ Hawkinson all the way at two. Uh, I actually love TJ Hawkinson a lot. I feel like uh, he's in a very good offense that is going to be better off for him because Kirk Cousins targets his tight ends at 23%. So Hawkinson will be getting a ton of targets this year. And like Jesse mentioned in the wide receivers, uh, Justin Jefferson is going to start getting some double teams. So the targets are going to have to go elsewhere. And I think TJ Hawkinson will be that guy. I think TJ Hawkinson is a very, I guess, underrated tight end in the fact of what he brings to the table. He's very good run after catch as well. Then after Hawkinson, I have George Kittle. I still like Kittle. No matter who his quarterback is going to be this year, I, I just like Kittle's ability to get open. Then I have Mark Andrews, who I am not as high on as some people are. I don't ever trust Lamar Jackson's throwing capability. He's going to have to show me he can do it consistently for me to buy into Mark Andrews being any higher than four. Then we have Pitts at five, who I am still high on despite – the quarterback situation being an unknown there in Atlanta. Kyle Pitts is just a freak of an athlete. I think just the ability of his, the separation he can get on opposing teams is going to play beneficial to whoever his quarterback is. Then I have Darren Waller up at six. I like Waller, the thought of Waller and the giants. I just always am scared about whether Waller's going to be able to stay on the field or not because he has not proven that he can stay on the field. He'll he'll come in and he'll have a 130-yard receiving game and then he'll sit out for the next three weeks. So there's some question marks about his health that I it scares me, I guess, away more on him than it would on some others. And then I have Fryermuth all the way up, up at seven. Like Trey said, he's not great, but he's not bad at all. He's And he has Kenny Pickett's trust. Him and Kenny Pickett started um, having a pretty good cohesion towards the end of the season last year. I like Friar Muth because he does does catch quite a few touchdowns as well in the red zone. Then I have Dallas Goddard at eight, who's another one that I really like, athletic ability out of the tight end position. Then I have Evan Ingram, who had a really good year last year. And then at number 10, I kind of reached here a little bit. So you had Njoku in yours. I went with Irv Smith Jr. in mine. Irv Smith Jr. is a – tight end who is really highly sought after when he was drafted a few years ago when the uh, Vikings took him. He just never really panned out on the Vikings. I don't know what it was. He was another one that has had some injury history, but he's still only 25 years old, and all the Bengals have been doing about him is raiding in training camp. So I'm kind of wanting to see what he can do with Joe Burrow as he's going to be replacing kind of what Hayden Hurst did last year, but brings a little bit more upside and ceiling than Hayden Hurst. So I'm going to go ahead and jump him into my top 10, just based off the quarterback he's going to be playing with. He has shown some inconsistency, so he's not a player I would reach on, but if he's just sitting there and you just want to back up tight end on your roster to wait and see, Hey, this person could pop off because of his, age, athleticism, and his new quarterback he's going to be playing with, who happens to be Joe Burrow. I kind of like Irv Smith. I love that list. Irv Smith is definitely going to get some commenters below, I feel like. But, hey, it's better to be on the right side of history. And, Bear, what is going to be your top ten tight ends? I like that good picture of Dalton Schultz there. Yeah, for my top ten tight ends, obviously it's going to be Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews 1-2. I have Darren Waller as my number three tight end this season. Seth said he has some injury problems. I agree with that. The more I think about it, the less I like it because I remember Darren Waller with the Raiders, and when he got paid, he got that big contract, and he just stopped playing football. He was dealing with some injuries, but when a guy gets paid and you see his production go straight down, that's not a good sign for the future. I think Darren Waller has confusion on what is an injury and what's being hurt. You can play through being hurt. You can't play through being injured. I'm hoping this change of senior will help him with the Giants, and Daniel Jones will be able to give him the ball because I know Daniel Jones loves tight ends. I'm going to put him at the three for now, but this is likely to change after a couple of weeks if we see the same Darren Waller that was with the Raiders the last couple of seasons. But for four, I'm going to go TJ. I think TJ is going to have a great season. Five, George Kittle slipping down the list a little bit and becoming more of a blocking tight end. Six, I can't believe neither of you had Dalton Schultz on your list for six. Uh, he is my guy. I honestly could have put him at five because I think his production is going to be insane with the Texans this year. I love Dalton Schultz. He's always going to be a Dallas Cowboy, but he was offered $9 million to stay with Dallas before last season started. He turned it down. He bet on himself. He's going to make $10 million with the Texans. But if you ask him right now, I bet he would say he'd rather take the $9 million and stay with the Dallas Cowboys. The Texans are going to have C.J. Stroud. And the one thing that I always hear from announcers, broadcasters, analysis guys, 
The one thing that is consistent with young quarterbacks is they always find their tight end when they get in trouble. I don't know how good C.J. Stroud is going to be, but I do know that in the PPR format, Dalton Schultz could easily get four to seven catches per game. He is the clear number one tight end on that depth chart, and he's the clear best option in the passing game altogether, I think, for the Texans. I think he's going to make a very good transition from Dallas to the Texans. I will be targeting him in all of my fantasy leagues. So he will be at the six, could have been at the five. Everton Ingham's going to go to the seven, like Trey said. He's going to have a really good year for the Jags. Pat Fry removed, Tyler Higby, and Dalton Kincaid will round us out. I mean, Josh Allen with his talent. That's all you got to say. He's big. He's fast. He can catch. He, he's he's going to be incredible probably in a couple years for the Bills. But we're going to put him at the 10 spot for now, see what he can do, and then we'll bump him up next year. But that is my top 10 for this year. Just want to let everyone know that while we do give out free picks, plays, and predictions on our YouTube channel, we also have a website for you to check out. On our website, bearsprofitplays.com, you can subscribe to the website absolutely free with an email and gain access to our written articles about upcoming sporting events. If you're really looking to make some cash, we have an option to become a member of our website. If you become a member, you will gain access to our locks of the week, which are written articles that go in depth as to why we are picking that particular outcome. As of now, our member plays have been red hot, hitting over 60% of our plays. If you don't want to become a member, it's no sweat. We are here to try and make you guys some money. That's our main goal. So come on over to bearsprofitplays.com and subscribe for free. Check us out, follow our free picks, and see for yourself that our member plays are a great investment for you. Thanks for watching.